Hello, in this video, I'll be introducing you to moments and the principle of moments. The definition of a moment is the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the pivot. Let me show you an example. Here we have a beam with some sort of hinge at one end and a force applied at the other. You'll see that the force is acting perpendicular to the beam itself, so there is a right angle here. And that means that we can simply work out the moment caused by this force by multiplying f by x. And in terms of the direction of this moment, moments can either be clockwise or anti-clockwise. So we need to take a situation and imagine that this was the only force acting. In this example, it is the only force acting. So if left to its own devices, which way would the beam rotate around its pivot point or around the point where you're taking moments? Well, this beam would rotate clockwise if left to its own devices. So we can write that the moment is fx clockwise. For example, if x was 2 meters and f was 10 newtons, this would give us a moment of 10 newtons multiplied by 2 meters, giving us 20 newton meters. It's worth stressing that the word perpendicular must be included in your definition of the moment, and it is a very important point. You'll see in this diagram here that the force is not acting at 90 degrees to the beam. There are two methods we can use to solve this. The first is to work out what the perpendicular distance from the pivot is. This line shows the perpendicular distance, you can see the right angle down here, between the pivot and the line of action of the force. So if we were to work out the length of this line, we could use that instead of x as our distance. Let's give that a go. So we have a right angle triangle here, and we know the side adjacent to the angle f and the hypotenuse x we would like to find the opposite angle. So we can use either tan for adjacent and opposite or sine for opposite and hypotenuse. So we're going to, I'm going to start with sine here. So our unknown length, question mark, sine theta is going to be equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, meaning that that perpendicular distance is equal to x sine theta. That means that our moment is the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance. So our moment is equal to f x sine theta. An alternative way of approaching this, and my preferred option, is to consider f as a vector. And you can see here that the force can be resolved into its vertical component. In this case, the vertical component is equal to f sine theta. So we can calculate the moment as f sine theta, the perpendicular component of the force, multiplied by the distance x, which can also be simplified to f x sine theta. So whichever method you prefer, you end up with the same answer ultimately, f x sine theta. Let's now take a look at the principle of moments. That says that for an object in equilibrium, the sum of the clockwise moments around a point is equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moments around the same point. Let's begin with a relatively simple example of this, with a seesaw that is balanced, that is, it is in equilibrium. The first thing we need to do with any situation like this is decide where we are going to take moments around. In this particular diagram, that should be obvious. We have a pivot in the middle and we'll take moments around that point. Note that I haven't drawn all of the possible forces on this diagram. There would, of course, be a reaction force acting up from the pivot. And that reaction force, because the seesaw is in equilibrium, must be equal to the sum of the two downward forces, because the 
beam is neither accelerating up nor down. Because we don't know this reaction force R and we aren't particularly interested in it, we should take moments around the pivot point because at that point the reaction force R has no turning effect because it is right bang on the pivot itself. So let's call this point point P for pivot and declare that we are taking moments around that point. So the first thing we would always do is to say clockwise moments are equal to anti-clockwise moments around that pivot point P. That is the principle of moments. I like to write it in shorthand like this. So the first thing we do is we work out which of our forces are causing clockwise turning moments. So to do that, take each force in turn and imagine that it is the only force acting. Which direction would the beam rotate in? So let's start with our unknown force F that we're trying to find out. If that was on its own, you could see that that would pull down this side and the beam would rotate clockwise. So that is our clockwise moment, F. And we multiply that by the perpendicular distance, which is 1.2. That will be equal to our anti-clockwise moment, which you can see here, the 100 Newton force would cause a, an anti-clockwise rotation if left to its own devices. So 100 multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the pivot of 0 0.4 meters. Remember, the force R, because it has no perpendicular distance from the point P, has no turning effect, and so we can neglect that from our calculations. So now let's rearrange our equation. So F is going to be equal to 40, that's 100 multiplied by 0.4, divided by 1.2, that will give us a force of 33.3 .3 newtons. Let's move on to a slightly more challenging problem. In this problem, we have a beam that is resting at one end on a pillar, and the other end is supported by a cable that is pulling at 60 degrees from the horizontal. The beam itself has a weight of 50 newtons acting from the center. It is a uniform beam. And an additional force of 20 newtons is acting on the beam, two meters from the end. The question here is to find R and T. So we have two unknowns. That means we're going to, we're going to have to use two different calculations in order to identify both of them. The first thing we have to do, this is a moments question. So the first thing we have to do is to identify where we're going to take moments around. Let's label this end end A, and this end, end B. So those are the two points that we could feasibly take moments around. We could, of course, take moments around either of these two positions here, where the 50 Newton or the 20 Newton force was acting, but that wouldn't make any sense because we already know these values. So there's no advantage to be gained from positioning our pivot there, which would cause these to have no turning force and omit them from our calculations. Instead, we should choose either A or B, because that would omit one of these two forces from our calculations due to there being zero distance. I'm going to suggest we start with taking moments around B. So the first thing we do is we say that clockwise moments are equal to anti-clockwise moments. The system is in equilibrium. And then we begin forming our equation. So let's identify all of the forces where if B was the pivot, the beam would rotate clockwise as a result of their action. Well, we can see here that R would cause a clockwise turning moment. So on our left hand side, we can write R multiplied by the distance from R to point B, which is 10. And that will be equal to, to the 20 Newton force, which would cause an anti-clockwise turning effect multiplied by 2 meters plus the 50 newton force also causing an anti-clockwise turning effect multiplied by 5 meters. Note that our equation does not include the tension force T. That's because the perpendicular distance from the tension force to B is zero, so it has no turning effect. 
So let's rearrange our equation. R is going to, going to be equal to 40 plus 250 divided by 10, which will give us reaction force, contact force here of 29 newtons. Now, in order to find T, we could take moments around point A and perform a similar calculation. However, it is much quicker and easier for us to instead consider equilibrium of forces. That is to say that all the forces up must be equal to all the forces down because there is because the system is in equilibrium, there is zero net force. So let's begin by listing all the upward forces on the left hand side of our equation. So we have R, which we know to be 29 newtons, plus the vertical component of this tension T, which will be T sine 60 degrees. And that will be equal to the sum of these two forces, 50 plus 20. So let's clean that up a little bit. So we have R that is 29 plus T sine 60 to equal to 70. So we can rearrange that to get T equals 70 minus 29 divided by sine 60, which gives us an answer for T of 47.3 newtons.